Hi, welcome back to the next installment of Deadly Affirmations, the video book. T today's video snippet will be the second part of chapter 17, in which we lay the groundwork for something I'm not going to tell you about yet, but you just have to listen. Or you could buy a copy of the book and read it for yourself. What a good idea. I'll put a link in just so you can do that. What a guy. Yes, I am. Okay. If you're ready, here we go. Patience got out of bed, happily remembering that it was finally Friday. Then she looked at her phone. Damn, it was only Wednesday. Damn, damn, damn. Well, at least it's hump day, she thought. That was something. Patience got cleaned up for work, found a completely uninspiring outfit for her completely uninspiring job. She hated everything in her closet, she decided. A horizontally striped t-shirt dress with gray and black stripes from the hem to her chest, a solid vermilion bodice, and a crew neck, black ballet flats, and a lightweight teal nylon bomber jacket. That'll work, she thought. Abraxas seemed to agree. Now, she said to herself, don't forget your guide. You never really know what you need. When you invite the unknown into your life, you are admitting that life may teach you a valuable lesson by forcing you to adjust to new and unexpected situation. If you set for your curiosity, you may be faced with un uncomfortable truths, but the possibilities that the unknown holds will lead you on the road to becoming the person that you were meant to be. Or your affirmation. Number 17, when I look at the world, I feel joy and expectation. Or your lunch. Patients threw a bottle of water, an apple, and a super lunchbox, organic chickpeas and almonds, free-range veggie crisps, crunchy trail mix, non-GMO corn and flax chips, and sustainably farmed dark chocolate raisins into her big denim bag and headed out the door. Then she headed right back in again. She had forgotten to feed Brax. She had learned over the years that they had been together that her cat did not suffer fools or forgetful humans gladly. Wednesday's work at Thorough Solutions was just as uninspiring as patients had feared that it would be, but she dove into the piles of files and made piles so much smaller that her new boss, Matilda Walls, a woman of indeterminate age, probably between 40 and 120, short of stature, with a too broad chest, a large head, small eyes, thin hair sprinkled with gray, a flat nose, and tanned out of a bottle skin. Patients called her Tilly the Hun when she wasn't around made a point of complimenting patients on her good work. I'm sure that really is the best you can do. I don't know what it is that you need to improve, but something is definitely wrong and you should work on fixing it. And then she mentioned, motioned to the intern and said, Patience needs more to do. Please get her more work. She smiled and walked away. Thanks, Tilly, Patience muttered under her breath, imagining Ms. Walls sitting beside Patience at a fancy restaurant, suffering a severe nosebleed and choking to death in a stupor. That thought made Patience smile and reminded her that she was hungry. Hey, it's lunchtime, she realized. Patience walked over to the reception desk and asked Julie if she'd like to eat lunch with her outside in the sunshine. Julie agreed. Julie had packed a nutritious lunch of a broccoli pesto pasta salad, blood orange sections, four skewers, actually toothpicks, of two currant tomatoes each, and a handful of carob chips in a little plastic lunchbox. The two women walked outside and found a bench in the sun. Patience showed Julie her super lunchbox, and Julie showed Patience her plastic lunchbox, and the two traded tastes of each other's lunches until both boxes were empty. Unfortunately, after lunch, Tilly the Hun called the TS workers together for a meeting. This afternoon, she told them, will be spent doing some team building. Patience took a deep breath and breathed out a slow, cleansing breath. Fucking wonderful, she said so softly that she was pretty sure that no one else had heard her. Julie did give her a surprised look, but that might have been due to one of the sales guys farting about that time. Maybe not. There would be a number of activities, all designed to help the workers feel at ease with each other so that they could more easily put their efforts toward achieving common goals or some such shit. First, there was two truths and a lie. Everyone was supposed to write down two true things about themselves in one lie and try to make the others believe that the lie was true. Patients chose, one, I have a tattoo, two, my cat is named after a Santana album, and three, I am the River City murderer. By the end of the activity, her co-workers were laughing hysterically and were now convinced that Patients' cat was named Corazon and she had a tattoo in a very intimate place. Patients had learned to blush on demand many years ago and had and it had come in handy today.
Then the employees played Penny Logo, where everyone emptied the change from his or her pockets and purses and made the Thorough Solutions logo out of pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. That wasn't so bad. And Tilly the Hun had to break out some rolls of TS pennies and nickels and dimes to fill out the designs. Then they played classifications. The staff was broken up into teams of three, and the members of each team had to introduce themselves to each other and share some of their likes and dislikes and hobbies. The task for the teams was to decide how they should classify themselves, as a team, into two or three subgroups by using positive, tolerant, respectful, non-judgmental criteria, like night owls or barbecue lovers or movie geeks, and then sharing their classifications with the other teams. Patients' team had decided that they were Vikings. Finally, they got to the final activity, make your own team building activities. The employees were again divided into groups with none larger than four or five members. Each group had 30 minutes to design an activity that would bring the TS gang closer and foster communication, creativity, and trust. The final half hour would be filled with the groups presenting their activities. Patients shared the best team building activity she could think of would be to take the whole office staff to Tahiti for a week. Her group loved the idea. Tilly didn't. Patients left work with a terrible headache, took two aspirin from the little bottle in the glove compartment of her car, dry, yuck, and decided that she deserved a nice dinner, something interesting. Julie's tiny tomatoes had been really tasty from the cornucopia that was Hoffman's Market. She found a good place to park. Strangely enough, since the asshole's car had caught fire in the parking lot, patients now always found a place to park within 20 feet of the entrance to the market. Patients walked into the market, grabbing a little single person's cart at the door. She found a yummy-looking wedge of Stilton, a fresh baguette, three perfect ripe red Anjou peppers, a quarter pound of prosciutto de Parma at the deli, a bottle of Taylor Fladgate dry white port, a bottle of tonic, and since she was close to home, a box of Eskimo pies. She got into line. She was third behind a woman who was pushing two carts, each full to overflowing with junk food and junk beverages. This was taking so long that Patience was beginning to worry about the Eskimo pies melting when it was her turn. The woman was finishing up, and Patience had turned away for ten seconds, noticing some scandalous headline about the president in one of the tabloids. And when Patience turned back to her cart to begin putting her first item on the conveyor belt, the Moo Moo woman pushed ahead of Patience and put a single bottle of Diet Coke on the belt ahead of patients shopping. It was the same woman who had pushed and shoved ahead of patients three or four times in the past week. She was wearing a different muumuu. This one was a cheap knockoff imitation dashiki more than a muumuu, but it was her. She still looked like a walrus wearing a tent. Patients said, hey, I was in line. The gigantic woman replied, I've just got one item. It won't take a minute. I need some sugar, sugar. I've got hypoglycemia and I could faint. And then she looked at patients and then at the other people in line, pouted and blinked, a, blinked big sad eyes. Oh, please, I will owe you one. Patience mentally kicked herself and said, okay, go ahead. And thought, I'll make sure of that, lady. I'll make sure of that. The Moo Moo woman made a simpering smile of thanks and squeezed around the front of patient's cart and had to search through a gigantic flowered purse that clashed with the dashiki for, a cha for change. This was taking far too long. Those Eskimo pies were going to be Eskimo soup by the time patients got them home. Patients couldn't believe she was saying the words that were coming out of her mouth. That's okay. I'll get it to the cashier. The Moo Moo woman grabbed the Diet Coke and swept out of the store, saying nothing more but waving obliquely in patients' direction. I've got it this time, lady, patients said to herself, but I guarantee that you'll get it another time. Patients wondered if it would be a bad idea to drink the port in her car.